Hello and welcome to Enquire to Choir. My name is Eva and I'm here to help you, fellow choir people. So you're working with choirs and you want to talk about dynamics. Great. I wanted to make a video in which I actually try to help you achieve certain levels of dynamics in your choir sound, which proved not to be that easily done. This video is inspired by the past six months I've been experiencing with one of my choirs. I've been working with them for about a year and a half. They are great. We've been working a lot because they had been very neglected by the previous uh, conductor, so there was a lot we had to do. But we've managed to do all of it, except dynamics. I can say a million times, this is piano, this is forte, this is crescendo, this is decrescendo. And maybe I can achieve for them to do it at that rehearsal or for a single performance. But the next performance, the next rehearsal is all over again. I realized that it's because we are speaking a different language. I had the previous knowledge when I say something it's not just a word for me, it's a whole concept. And for them, that concept is not known. For example, they know what it means when I say piano. They know that it means softer, but they think they are doing it and nothing is going on because they don't understand what they actually have to do to achieve that dynamic. When they hear they have to change something in the dynamics, they think they're doing it, but they're actually not for three reasons. The first one is they don't understand that it's not enough just to think, now I will be louder. It's not just about thinking that, it's about actually doing it. And to find the mechanism to do it in a way that the listener, the conductor and the audience realizes and registers that they have become louder. The second thing I realized I need to work on because they don't have the concept about it. Dynamics is relative. It's all relative horizontally in time during the performance and it's all relative vertically when you look at the correlation between all the choir parts singing at that time. It's not the same if your voice part is currently singing the main melody or is a backup harmony. The piano level is different for these two situations. But the biggest revelation about this problem was they don't understand the psychology of a group sound. Doing dynamics as an individual and doing dynamics as a group, as a choir, is a completely different ball game and i'm not using the word ball game accidentally this is the same speech i gave to my choir a few weeks back you have to think about your sound the sound you're making as a ball physical ball it spreads like a ball and the whole choir is a giant pile of balls English is not my mother tongue, but you get the idea. The collective sound, choir sound, think of it as many balls. So, for example, you have 50 choir members, which is, I know, a luxury to have, but for illustration purposes, 50 singers are 50 balls. Each and every one of them is a ball. Let's say that their sound individually at that current moment is a tennis ball tennis ball is something like this, okay? It's not a big sound, but when you get 50 tennis balls connected, it's a big sound. And then there is a part they have to become piano in. They have to achieve the softer sound. Every one of them, every one of the tennis balls has to become smaller. Individually, I'm thinking, I'll become a ping pong ball, a table tennis ball, which is this big, this big, because it's I don't know, six times smaller ball than a tennis ball, so I became softer. But what happens when every individual thinks that way in a choir? You get 50 ping pong balls. Did you get the effect? You are less loud than when you were singing as tennis balls, but 
Ping pong balls are smaller, but not as small as you probably wish them to be. It's a huge amount of sound still. So what's the next small ball? Well, a marble. A marble is this big. And if I get 50 marbles, if I get all of my marbles together, if I get 50 marbles together, I get a smaller sound. There is a huge difference between a tennis ball sound and a marble sound and the basketball sound. The point is to achieve a softer sound when you are a tennis ball, it's probably not enough to individually get to a ping pong ball. It's probably necessary for every individual singer to get to a size of a marble. It's a ball game. If you want to get a bigger sound, tennis ball will be a huge difference but the very big, big, big sound is a basketball. 50 basketballs are a huge sound. That is the group sound psychology. I wanted to find a metaphor that represented that. If I do something as an individual singer, it doesn't mean that the whole cumulative effect on the sound is what we wished for it to be. You have to do the difference a bit extra for it to be noticeably different. That is the biggest key. Just because you think you're doing it doesn't mean I can actually hear it. So it's not a solution to say to your choir, it's forte, it's forte. That's not enough because they could be thinking, well, I am louder and they're not because cumulatively as a choir sound, they have not become louder and they have not arrived to the forte you are reaching for. That is a different ball game. The next thing is about that it's all relative. You have to be very aware of what your choir can do and cannot do. From my experience, the biggest problem when it comes to dynamics is not being loud enough. If you want your choir to be forte, but you're not able to reach a certain level of what uh, you wish for, then adjust all of the other dynamics. When people are listening to something, it's the same when we are watching something. The biggest thing we need to be able to recognize all the things on the screen is contrast. If the contrast is bad, then we are not that capable of recognizing things on the screen or in real life. It's the same with listening. We need a contrast. To notice that something has shifted, there needs to be a difference. Yes, I can notice a difference between piano and forte, but if your forte can't be as loud as you wish for your forte to be, then adjust the previous level. So your piano could be a bit softer. It's about the correlation between the levels. There are a lot of levels to get through to get to forte, which we're aiming for. Also, just because something is forte or it's written forte, it doesn't say what amount of decibels is forte. That could be forte for you, for your choir. It's about how you get there. The way you sing piano and the way you sing forte when it comes to the vocal technique should be the same. The character of piano and forte should be the same. It should be obvious that it was sung by the same choir, by the same people. The biggest advice I have for piano, every singer and every choir part should be able to hear their neighbors. When it comes to forte, I keep saying here on the channel, it's about how all the voices correlate to each other. And you have to be aware of one thing. When we are listening to things, we hear the middle frequencies the best and the highest frequencies we hear better than the lower ones. That manifests itself while thinking about the basses and the sopranos. A loud soprano is always more prominent than a loud bass. You have to think about what it sounds like to the audience, not what it sounds like in the choir. You are the producer of sound as their choir director and you adjust the levels and they have to understand one key thing that they can think all they want, but you are the only one who hears and can hear 
the cumulative sound. The relativity is also vertically challenged. It's not the same if a choir part is singing the main melody and if you're a backup harmony. I had an incident. It was something I was I was surprised about. At one rehearsal, I had three sopranos and I think six altos. And the sopranos have the main melody and the altos were being too loud. They were eating them for breakfast. I said to the altos, you have to be a bit softer. And one of the singers was really mad and she said, well, you told us to be louder here. We're gonna be louder because you said so. I didn't know I have to be piano here. You're telling me different things now. And I said to her, it's relative. First of all, what does it mean to be louder? The previous rehearsal, I said to you, be louder because you were not loud enough. But this is not the same rehearsal. You have to be less loud because the main melody has to be heard and there are three of sopranos present today and they can't possibly be as loud as you, the altos, are. So you have to adjust. You have to listen to each other and you have to adjust. And it's true. It changes every rehearsal, every performance. It's just about listening. You have to listen to each other. It's not just about singing. It's about listening and adapting all the time. When it comes to crescendo and decrescendo, I think it's taken for granted how difficult that is. It's the same as doing ritardando or ritenuto. To actually do a great crescendo, you have to have a very clear beginning point and a very clear end point, and you have to produce it in a way that is logical. It's not just about become louder when it comes to crescendo. It's about getting through all of the stages, through all of the sizes of every ball to get to the bigger sound. I advise you to do that very carefully, each and every choir part, voice part separately first, in a slower tempo, in a much slower tempo, because maybe they do not realize what they actually have to do to become louder and not to change the nature of their sound. If you do it in a slower tempo, you have to activate your brain. It's not automated. It's not about just improvising. It's about connecting the, the consciousness of your brain to do a certain kind of a crescendo. You become conscious of what every tone has to go through for the melody or for the part to actually do a crescendo. Okay, so that is it. I hope my little rant, not so little, was helpful to you and it shifted some of your perspectives and maybe spurred some thoughts into your head. Thank you for watching. I'm glad to be back. It's been a hectic choir season, but it's finished, almost finished, and I hope to be here more regularly during the summer. I want to say hello and welcome to all of the new subscribers. I am astonished that this community is growing. If you have any questions, you can find me on Facebook or you can email me. If you like the video, you can press the like button below. If you wish to see more from Inquire to Choir, you can subscribe and watch all of the other videos. There are a lot of them here already. And conduct well, conductors, and I'll see you next time. Bye!